Man, I love cucumbers. They are awesome. We eat these all the time. And look at these beautiful cucumbers growing here. Hold it, wait. What's wrong with this leaf? Look at a bunch of little white spots all over it. And this one over here, it's kind of dried and yellow on the ends too. I've got the same problem over on this leaf here. This leaf looks fine. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that leaf. No white spots, no crinkling, no drying. That's really weird. Ha! Huh. Here's a bigger leaf. It's got the white spots. It's got the dry yellowing edge. And it's got a dry spot. And very brittle. Ha! Huh. Here's another one, same kind of thing. Got the dry spots and it's even kind of getting bigger here. Holy cow, look at this. My goodness, I wonder what kind of disease I have here. Uh-oh, I am in trouble. Here's another one. Something is terribly wrong. I wonder if I got a fungus or maybe I, maybe I just need to remove the whole plant from the garden. It could be disease and, and could spread to the rest of my garden. Wow, here's another dried leaf here. Uh-oh. Obviously, these plants are not getting enough water. I need to start watering, watering, watering. These cucumbers here look kind of funky. They're not straight like the other ones. they got a bulge at the end. What is going on with my plants? I hear those comments a lot from fellow gardeners and they don't know what to do. They just simply think that they need more water or they've got a disease and they need to take the plants out. In reality, these are classic symptoms of potassium deficiency. The symbol for potassium, the element, is K. And it's actually never found by itself in nature. It's always bound with something else like chlorine, which would make potassium chloride. Uh, nitrogen, carbon, oxygen, something like that. Potassium by itself is very volatile and so it doesn't stay by itself. And that by itself causes another problem which is called potassium fixation where it binds itself with the particles in the soil and so it is not available to the plants. Actually an average one acre of farmland will have 20,000 to 40,000 pounds of potassium in the soil, but only have maybe 20 or 40 pounds available to the plants because that is what's available in the water-soluble format. There's plenty of potassium on the earth, primarily in the form of potassium chloride in the soil. It's also plentiful in oceans. So there's plenty of potassium to go around, but it needs to be in the proper format available to the plants. Here I've shared with you some of the typical signs of potassium deficiency. You can also see that this leaf here is so deficient in potassium that is now is tearing, which is another symptom of potassium deficiency. So what do you do when you see the white spots on the leaves, the crinkly edges on the sides of the leaves, or when you see this, advanced stages of potassium deficiency? Well, the good news is all you need to do is give it more potassium. This is your plant saying, I need some potassium. Just like when we have a nutrient deficiency in our bodies and we have nutrient deficiency symptoms, plants will also share those deficiency symptoms with you once you understand how to read the plant. In this case, all we need to do is give the plant half an ounce of potassium per linear foot. Now, the only way that I really know how to do that is by bagged fertilizers because I know exactly what is and is not in that bag. For example, I would give this plant here half an ounce of potassium per linear foot, either in a potassium chloride, which is like 0060, 0063, something like that. Or that may also be called murate of, of potash. It's called potash because it, potassium used to be derived from burning plants. Or you could use potassium nitrate, like 0044. Either of those work well in high rainfall areas, areas that they have more than 20 inches of average annual rainfall. In low rainfall areas, 
you may want to be applying potassium sulfate, which would be something like 0050 or 0053, to give the plant the nutrient that it's needing. Because I know that some plants are heavy feeders of potassium, one of the things I do is I have a five gallon bucket of just potassium. This one I picked up in Houston, Texas, which has high rainfall. So this is actually potassium nitrate. The reason why murate of potash was available in the Houston area is because there's well over 20 inches of average annual rainfall. And so the soil is acidic. Here in Idaho, we're well below 18 inches of average annual rainfall. And so we don't want to raise the pH because the soil is already alkaline. In Houston, we do. However, this will absolutely work here. And when I finish using this five gallon bucket, which may take years or decades, because most of the potassium that my plant seed comes directly from the mint light of weekly feed, then I'll replace it with the potassium sulfate that is available here locally. So a good rule of thumb is whatever is readily available in the commercial locations like feed stores or fertilizer plants in your area is what you're going to need. When you start giving the plant the nutrient that it needs with potassium, the dead, dried, and dying areas of the leaves do not go away. Those are permanent and it's like having dead cell skins from a sunburn. They're not going to replace it when you add more moisture to the skin. So you, those won't go away, but on your younger, newer leaves, you won't see the deficiencies. Now here on this young leaf here, you can see we still have the white specks, so it means at this point in the plant, it was still deficient in potassium. Now the older leaves down below will show advanced potassium deficiencies because potassium moves into the plant. It actually moves from the leaves to the fruit or to the nuts. And so the older leaves will generally be worse off than the new leaves. But as you can see, these new leaves here, since I've given it potassium, are completely healthy. There are no white specks. There's no firing on the edges. Everything looks great on these leaves. It can take anywhere from a week to two weeks for the effect of potassium to show up on the leaves. And I fed these plants about oh, five days ago. And you can see the new leaves are looking great. Now right next to the cucumbers, we've got cantaloupe growing. But I don't see any deficiencies in potassium here. So I only want to give potassium to the plants that are deficient in potassium. Just like in your family and just like on the planet, all humans need the same nutrients. It doesn't make a difference if you're Asian, European, African, you all need the same nutrients. Now how much of a particular nutrient you need is dependent on what's going on in your life at that time. You may be a three-year-old and you may not need a lot of potassium, but when you're out there playing football day after day on the high school team, you may need a lot more potassium. So we all need the same nutrients, but we may need more nutrients as we grow and change. Now with plants, plants need potassium throughout their entire life in seed formation, blossom formation, and fruit formation. So you need to make sure that your plants have the proper amount of potassium throughout the entire life cycle. The only way that I know to do that effectively is to give it in a granular or water soluble formula and that's why I use potassium and uh, rarely do I see potassium deficiency in my plants because I use the Midlatter weekly feed. Now I let these plants go deliberate into a potassium deficiency because I have heard this complaint so many times from so many others and wanted to show it to you and how to treat it and the results from proper treating. So if, if your cucumbers are bent and curled or kind of bulbing on the ends, that's due to a potassium deficiency. So as soon as you start seeing the yellowing, tearing of the edges, the white spots on the leaves, give it the proper amount of potassium, which is a half an ounce per linear foot. I don't know how you would do that with compost or any other fertilizer other than bagged fertilizer. So it's quick, it's easy, it's measurable. The amount is known by using simply bagged fertilizer. The bagged fertilizer comes from either deposits in the ocean, which I mentioned, or from deposits in the earth. 
So there's nothing inorganic about using bagged fertilizer. If you want to debate because it's been cleaned and removed of other substances and gone through a process to make it water soluble so it's no longer organic is up to you. I want to grow healthy nutrient dense fruit and plants that are disease resistant for example against rust fungus by giving it the proper amount of potassium. Now symptoms on other plants may look different and so the two places I go to find out if I have a deficiency on my plants is to the Mint Lata Gardening course book. And I turn to the nutrient deficiency section which gives a very quick, brief synopsis of common deficiency symptoms in plants. Now you can see we're over here in the cantaloupe and we don't see those same deficiencies we see next to it in the cucumbers. And we come over to the peppers, again, no deficiencies in potassium over here. This pepper plant looks perfectly healthy. Each plant may have different symptoms beyond the traditional firing and scorching on the edges and the white dots and the very dry leaves. Unfortunately, according to studies, 98% of Americans are nutrient deficient in their diets. The good news is that there are plenty of fruits and vegetables that have potassium in it and if we would simply eat more fruits and vegetables we would get the potassium that we need. Fruits and vegetables that include lots of potassium include for example beet greens, potatoes but not potato chips, black beans, carrots, spinach, broccoli, cantaloupe, and fresh tomatoes. Now this particular plant has a nutrient deficiency because I want to do a video on the deficiency that this has. So stay tuned for the next nutrient deficiency video here. This tomato plant is showing no deficiency symptoms because I've been feeding it properly and it's not part of the video series on nutrient deficiencies. But speaking of deficiencies in tomatoes, you may know that when you get blossom end rot or the black hard dried spot on the bottom of the tomato, it could be a sign of magnesium deficiency. Well, it could also be a sign of potassium deficiency. And potassium and magnesium, nitrogen, phosphorus, they all work together. Actually, if you have a deficiency on potassium and you take care of that deficiency, other deficiencies may pop up that you didn't notice because they were being masked by the more pronounced deficiency of potassium. The second resource that I go to which is my really go-to detailed resource on nutrient deficiencies is the Midlighter Garden Doctor Library. That's a three volume series of over 800 color photos that goes in detail of all the deficiency symptoms in the traditional plants that you see in the garden. As you can see we don't see those potassium deficiencies here in any of these plants. So generally what I do if I see something wrong with my plant I will turn to the Midlife Gardening Course book, to the deficiency section, find a quick synopsis of possible deficiency symptoms. Then for more detail, then I will turn to the, actually my garden library CD, the Midlife Gardening Library CD, which has all of the Dr. Midlife's books on it. But I'll turn specifically to that book in the Garden Doctor series and then find out what I need to do and the exact symptoms for broccoli, cabbage, onions, eggplant, Swiss chard, and beans. Proper diagnosis and treatment is what's critical in your health and in your plant health and that's why I recommend those two resources. This knowledge just doesn't fall out of the sky to me. It takes study but I tell you what the benefits are amazing. So if you want to have a healthy thriving garden like I want, then make sure that your plants are fed properly. What I do is I use the Midlighter Weekly Feed and the Midlighter Pre-Plant Nutrient Mixes. I mix those up myself and my plants get the proper nutrition that they need. Look at this beautiful straight eight cucumber. I'm picking that right after this video. Knowledge comes from study. The best sources I know of are what I mentioned. There will be links below or you can go to midlightergardening.com and order the Mint Lighter Gardening Course book, Garden Doctor Series books, or get both of them on the CD. 
If you are going to get the Midland Gardening Course book, I do highly recommend that you get that in paper copy because you'll refer to it so often you won't want to have to boot up your computer and load the CD every time. This is LDS Prepper reminding you, if you are prepared, you shall not fear. Part of preparation is knowledge and understanding. Rumors, old wives tales, and propaganda will not help you grow your garden. Facts, science, and understanding and proper application will. Best of success to you and your garden.